Have you mastered these seven skills for a happy retirement? Number six might be the most important, managing your cash flow. This is Wes Moss. Welcome to Money Matters. I'm going to go through these seven critical steps that I've learned through my research through identifying the habits, the happiness traits, the skills of the happiest retirees versus or relative to the most unhappy retirees in America. Let's go through the seven. Number one, maintain your social network. It's so easy to lose at least a big chunk of your social network when, once you leave work. It's documented that that is a, is a real issue for a lot of retirees. In the blue zones, these are the, the five, six regions around the world at a, that have been identified where people live the longest. They, uh, a big part of those traits that link those communities together has to do with social connectedness. 98% of the blue zones uh, people research shows attend church, 98%. There's a real community behind your church. Also around social connectedness, the Okinawans, also a place on planet Earth where people live the longest, have something called MOAs. The Okinawans have five friends or groups of five friends called a MOA where they dedicate each other or they dedicate their friendship for the rest of their lives. So they always have a very close social connected network even beyond their family. And then research for uh, my next book project shows that living close to your kids is really important. Here's how this goes. Uh, retirees are five times, five times more likely to be happy. So happy retirees versus unhappy. They live close to at least 50% of their children. So if you have four kids, you want to live close by to at least two of the four. Now we all know that when we have children, they don't always stay close to home. Some move to other states, other countries. But the research here is very clear. Uh, as a if you want to be a happy retiree, it's super important to live close to or near at least 50% of your children. Number two, don't let fear or uncertainty, particularly around money, rule your life. Here are a couple of ways to make sure that doesn't happen. Number one, understand the 4% rule. The 4% rule, I also have a video right here on West Moss Money Matters that explains this in depth, but it basically says that most of the time or 80% of the time, if you lock into taking 4% a year from your portfolio plus inflation and then rebalance your portfolio annually, you over the course of history or historically, you have a very good chance of not running out of money. Now it's not a rule that's etched in stone. It's a good, great rule of thumb. But if you understand that, it'll really help you understand how much you're withdrawing. And then what that leads to as far as the worry or not worry of depleting your money. The next part of this has to do with something I call income investing. One way to not ever worry about running out of money is to just live off the income that comes from your retirement portfolio. Now that could be dividends that come from stocks or interest that comes from bonds or dividends or distributions that come from a variety of other investments. And if you think about it, if you have your nest egg set up in a way where the only thing you're taking is the annual cash flow that comes from the portfolio and you're never dipping into principal, then well, think about it. How do you ever run out of money if that's your game plan and that's something you stick to? Now, income investing is only one of dozens and dozens of ways to invest your money. So it may not be for everyone. Talk to your advisor and see if that might be something for you to consider. And there's nothing like a simple budget that can go a really long way in retirement or maybe a financial plan that shows the amount of income you're going to get or receive throughout retirement relative to your budget. There's a lot of tools out there that do that. There's a, there's a tool right at westmoss.com under the resources tab. It's called the Retirement Calculator. It's a quick and easy way to either do a simple or detailed calculation. They'll show you both of those really important numbers. Number three, retirees, particularly happy retirees, are resilient. Psychology Today uh, defines resilience as a positive attitude, optimism, and the ability to see setbacks or failures as helpful reminders on how to get better. That's how humans are. And happy retirees are very resilient. So if you wake up in retirement a month or six months in, it isn't exactly what you thought it would be. Just remember, it will certainly get better over time because you're resilient. Number four, watch your schedule. Just like you go on vacation. Think about this. Sometimes we go on vacation and we have no agenda and we eat too much, we sleep too much, we drink too much, we don't have our normal happy behaviors and we wake up a week or two later and we think, wow, that was an unhealthy period of time. The same thing can happen in retirement. You've got to remember that you're going to have to start creating a schedule for yourself and keep practicing positive, healthy behaviors 
particularly now that you no longer have schedule or a schedule that's mandated by work. Another part of filling out that schedule is to have what I call core pursuits or hobbies on steroids. We'll talk about that in a minute. Number five, have a bare minimum of 3.6 core pursuits. I just mentioned this in number four. Core pursuits are really hobbies on steroids. And from my research, it's shown that the happiest retirees have at least 3.6, let's call it four, really important hobbies on steroids. I call them core pursuits. And it doesn't matter exactly what they are. It could be volunteering, it could be singing the church choir, going to church. It could be collecting cars, woodworking, bird watching, hunting, fishing. It doesn't matter. Cycling, bicycling, uh, playing tennis, playing golf. It doesn't matter what it is. It's something that you really live for. And you've got to have a lot of these things. Relative to unhappy retirees, unhappy retirees have less than two core pursuits. This is something that you need to think about. It might take some time to develop these. It's very difficult to all of a sudden show up in retirement at age 65 and say, okay, I'm going to get a bunch of core pursuits. Start working on them today in your 40s, in your 50s, in your early 60s. Understand that this is just as critical as the money piece of the equation and start working on them today. Number six, I mentioned this in the very beginning, managing or mastering your cash flow. When we get to retirement, we tend to think, uh, I've got to have this big giant pot of money to live on. Well, how does that really work? Well, if you've planned for retirement and you've thought about how happy retirees do it, what I see in my statistics show that happy retirees have a greater number of different income sources than unhappy retirees. That can be Social Security for you, Social Security for your spouse, maybe a pension for you, pension for your spouse, maybe you have rental income, and then of course your income that you can derive from your portfolio. But what if it's not quite enough and you're ready to retire and you don't quite have enough? Well, very often, another way to master your cash flow is to solve for an interim period of time, particularly if you want to wait till a higher Social Security payment. So let's say you can, you can get Social Security at 62, but it's not quite enough and it could help to save for a couple more years. You might consider working from 62 to 66 and then turning on Social Security or even waiting all the way to age 70 and saving from 62 to 70, having more years to save and then taking a higher Social Security payment. That period of time where you go from full-time work to maybe less than full-time work or even part-time work or even sometimes a hobby that produces some income, we call that the retirement gray zone. I think we tend to think of retirement as black or white, either I'm totally working or I'm totally retired. The reality here, particularly for younger retirees, I see have a really important phase called the gray zone, which is where you're slowing down work. So it may allow you to delay having to take Social Security, delay taking a pension. And typically when we do that, we know that Social Security keeps going up until we hit age 70. A lot of pension plans also rise the longer you wait to take them and you get to a couple more years to save money. That might be exactly what your retirement plan needs so that you can really master your cash flow. Now, number seven, sit back and relax. There's a lot of things we went through here today from the money side to the core pursuit side to the multiple income stream side. But remember that you're supposed to be relaxing and having a wonderful time, the time of your life when it comes to retirement. Happy retirees do all of these things together and have a goal to be happy in retirement and do the things that you've always wanted to be able to do and spend even more time on. So thanks for watching. If this was helpful, forward it to a friend or hit subscribe below. Thank you so much for uh, visiting and have a profitable rest of your day. I hope you found this video helpful. There are lots of other videos on this page that'll help you be a happy retiree. Just hit subscribe right below this video. You can find us or follow us at West Moss Money Matters on Facebook or Instagram, West Moss Money Matters, and Twitter at West Moss 365. Thank you so much.